All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel for another on-chain metrics update for Bitcoin. So in today's episode, we're going to be whale watching. If you're new to the channel, warm welcome. If you're a veteran to the channel, you should already know what this is. This is a series where we look at what the retail money is doing and what is the smart money doing. So we know that active addresses are going through the roof on Bitcoin right now. We know that when you typically highlight the price over the active addresses, a spike in active addresses is normally a sign uh, that you're getting close to a capitulation. So we're seeing active addresses going up. We're seeing the price of Bitcoin go down. We want to know what are the active addresses doing? What is the retail money doing? And more importantly, what are the institutional investors and whales doing? Because we want to follow the smart money. We don't want to follow the retail. So let's answer this question. Let's find out what the retail is doing and what institutions are doing. So starting off with the retail wallet and the chart key, the chart key is going to be the same for the Bitcoin wallets with less than 1, 10, 100 and 1000 BTC. The blue line is simply the BTC USD price with on the right side of the Y axis displaying the BTC USD price. And then the orange line is simply the addresses with the left side of the Y axis displaying the number of addresses. So before we microdose every single one of these individually, I want to show you why I always say and I believe that you should be doing the opposite of retail traders and looking at what the smart money is doing. Let's just look at the correlation between the addresses with less than one Bitcoin and the price spikes on the BTC USD chart. So notice the first all time high up here coming into 2011 where retail slowly DCAing out of the market as it approached its all time high. No, they started FOMOing in at the all-time high. What happened? The next two massive parabolas to the upside. They kept on accumulating throughout both of these and accumulating throughout the entirety of the bear market, especially jumping into accumulation uh, at the very start of the bear market. And then it starts to taper off as the prices get cheaper. So already not off to the greatest of starts what do you notice when the all-time high in 2017 comes into fruition did they slowly start dcaing out of the market as the all-time high came in no they fomoed into the all-time high and then what happened as the price started to roll to the downside uh, they weren't anywhere to be seen they left the markets what happened during the final capitulation they sold into the final capitulation what happened coming into the next all-time high well what's interesting about this is they basically left you know from from 2020 august of um yeah august of 2020 you know the address is more or less just stagnated and left as bitcoin started printing all-time highs and what's interesting about this is when you come over to you know the addresses with more than 100 bitcoin but potentially less or almost up to 999.99 recurring you know what were they doing during this massive run to the upside well institutions led this entire run to the upside and what will you notice when you look at previous market structures you know uh 2011 all-time high institutions weren't really doing too much but they were slowly accumulating and they started more rapidly accumulating as the bottom came in uh what happened during the 2013 all-time high did they fomo in no they started to slowly dca out as the markets became overextended then they basically just sat on the sidelines for a while price got cheaper and then they started heavily accumulating now look at this once again 2017 all-time high up here what did they do well they were accumulating before the 27 uh, uh, 2017 all-time high and then as the price started going on a parabola to the upside they slowly slowly dca'd out of the market as the price went on a parabola up and then they started dcaing back in as the prices got cheaper i mean look at them fomo buying as the capitulation in the 2018 bear market came you know this is where institutions and you know smart money whales they differ differentiate themselves from the trend because you see them you know buying when the price of bitcoin is cheap or relatively cheap in bear markets and then you see them slowly slowly dca out of these markets as the all-time highs come into fruition and then as you can see all-time high they slowly start to get back in and they ape in when everyone is fearful what is well we'll jump into what they're specifically doing uh at the end of the video because i really only want to very very quickly show you of these you know as we can all see you know the bitcoin price has been heading to the downside so you know you have to admit if you've been dollar cost averaging for the past 266 days uh more approximately 
260 days. If you've been DCAing at any point in the past 260 days, I'm not disagreeing with you that that is a great choice for the future, but you have to admit, in the short term, it hasn't worked out. DCAing uh, from the start of a bear market is not a good idea. I say that from experience because I DCA'd the entire way down in 2018. That's what retail traders told me to do. That is what I did. And when it came to the final capitulation, because everyone was convinced the bottom was in round here, I didn't have as much money to buy in at these prices down here at 3,200. But uh, what you know the common retail trader wants to do is they want to tell you, hey, you know, Bitcoin's just had an all-time high at 69,000, but you need to DCA at 40,000, then 34, then 33, and then down here at, you know, 25. You know, you could have just waited for a trend reversal on the daily time frame, which hasn't occurred yet. But nonetheless, retail DCAs the entire way throughout the bear market and institutions, they come in at the perfect time. So while the price has been moving to the downside, what has retail wallets been doing? Well, you can see here, Bitcoin wallets with less than one BTC are going on a parabola to the upside right now. And if we zoom in, you can see they're heavily accumulating as the price moves to the downside. We can also look at, we'll jump into the wheel alerts at the end as well. Uh, the Bitcoin wallets with less than 10 BTC. What are these people doing? So, you know, retail traders with a little bit more money, potentially up to as high as, you know, 9.99 BTC recurring, but maybe they only have one Bitcoin. While the price is moving down, what are they doing? They are accumulating. They're very, very slowly accumulating, you know, in the past four months or so. They've moved from about 145,000 wallets up to 149,000 wallets. So, they're slowly, slowly but surely accumulating. And by the way, these going up in the long term is a beautiful signal. It's really good to see that Bitcoin's becoming more decentralized by having these wallets with less than 1 BTC, less than 10 BTC, less than 100 BTC. We want these types of wallets in the markets because we want more retail holding the majority of the supply. However, in the short term, you can see retail FOMOs into these markets, you know, retail uh, wallets with less than one BTC. When the addresses go up, the top is in, and it's not until they get panicked back out of the market uh, that the bottom is finally in. And what are they doing right now? They're once again going against the grain. You know, throughout this entire bull run, uh, they weren't really here. You know, from when the price was round about 23,000, uh, even when it was down here at 10,000, you know, they left the market. They weren't accumulating. They were selling their Bitcoin from the start of the trend at 10,000. And when did they start to FOMO back in? They started to buy back in when the price was at 40,000. This is when they went on a drastic accumulation range. And even though the price is down here at 23, 22, 22,000 as of today, they're still heavily accumulating, even though it does not seem like the bottom is near. Addresses with less than 10 BTC, they're doing the same thing. Now, this is when we come into wallets that are not necessarily whales. I believe they're called dolphins, uh, accounts that have 100 or less BTC. Potentially, this could just uh, be an account with 10, 11, 12, anything up to 99.99 recurring once again. But what you can see is they've been slowly, slowly exiting the market. So, you know, you come up to these wallets that have uh, slightly higher amounts of Bitcoin, and they've actually been in a slow downtrend since 1,150, meaning, you know, 1 BTC equals $1,150. They've been slowly exiting the market. Now, uh, this makes sense to me. Uh, however, it's not the same with whales and institutions, and I'll show you the difference between that in a second. But what this does tell us is potentially it's just becoming more and more difficult for not whales, but people with large amounts of money. Obviously, you have to have a decent amount of money to be able to buy, you know, 10 to 100 BTC. So if these people are out here with, you know, 99 BTC in their wallets, you've got to imagine as the price slowly goes up, these people are going to DCA out of the market, hoping they can buy back in at cheaper prices. And often that the market never presents them with those opportunities to get back in, get all their Bitcoin back. So this is why, in my opinion, we're seeing somewhat of a deviation from the trend with the other charts in this one as this goes to the downside. But nonetheless, uh, once again, you can see, I mean, it's very, very slowly moving down. I mean, since 2018, this has gone from about 17,000 addresses down to about 15,900. So very, very slowly but steadily leaving the market. Now, this is when we start to focus with the next two charts, when we start to focus on what the institutions are doing, what the whales are doing, and also what are the institutions doing in comparison to the retail. So jumping into the BTC wallets with 1000 Bitcoin, I'm not gonna jump into the previous trend. We already talked about this. You can see 
brief overview. Uh, as the markets are cheap, they start to jump uh, retail or rather Wales institutions, they start to jump back into the market. As the price goes on a parabolic rally, they DCA out of the market and they've categorically pretty much done well in all of these trends. I mean, look at this. As BTC was at 46,500, just before topping out at 63,000, very, very close to the top, they started to parabolically leave the market. I mean, there was there was 2,000, almost 2,500 addresses, and it went all the way down to 2,150 as the price was topping out for the first time. And since then, they've more or less just been sitting on the sidelines. However, you can see there was a big spike when the price reached uh, 39,000, and you can actually see that they really started jumping into the markets round about this 30,000 ish mark. So it seems like they were doubling down on the price at that period in time. Uh, but what have they been doing since the most recent capitulation in the last one to two months or so? Well, when we look at what the wallets are doing with less than 1000 BTC, uh, they're currently leaving the markets. So, you know, looking at from the, it looks like the top was over here, March of 2022. So round about three months or so ago, uh, there were about 2,300 addresses. And today the addresses are down at round about, once again, if we zoom in, I think we'll find that it's 2,000. 150 2153 to be approximate so what we know from this is in as a rule of thumb you know the wallets the addresses that have you know round about 100 bitcoin that have round about just less than 1000 btc so in general we're talking about you know the smarter money the wallets that have a larger proportion of capital these people are at the moment they're leaving the markets and they're not returning uh, at this moment in time there hasn't been a huge buyback since the price has been capitulating so clearly these wallets either don't have the money to buy the dip uh, which is somewhat difficult to imagine if you've got 1000 BTC I could imagine that you've probably got a good amount of money on the sides to continue buying the dip otherwise you wouldn't have held your crown as a whale for this long uh, but this is where it gets interesting and this is where I'm going to wrap up the video what you can see over here is the Bitcoin ratio of retail to institutional addresses. Now, how we understand this chart is a retail investor is constituted as a Bitcoin investor who has less than 10 BTC and an institutional investor is counted by someone who owns Bitcoin who has more than 1000 BTC. So we're looking at basically the inverse of this. Previously, you know, we were finishing off on wallets that have just under 1000 BTC so anything between 100 BTC up to 999 recurring once again and now we're looking at you know the ratio of these retail addresses in comparison to the institutional investors now when institutional investors jump into the markets uh, it says over here you know the ratio decreases and the bitcoin price is likely to surge so in blue over on this chart here what you have is the ratio of retail to institutions so when this blue line is going up it means they're in as a ratio uh, there are more retail traders than institutional investors and when we look at the orange line once again this is the chart we all know and love the btc usd price on a logarithmic growth curve scale so what you'll notice it is if we look back at previous trends if we zoom in over here you can see Oops, need to reset the zoom. Uh, what happens as the blue line starts to reach a parabola? Well, the top comes in very, very quickly. Uh, what happens when the blue line starts to decrease, which means that, that there are a higher level of institutional investors in comparison to retail traders? Well, what happened when institutional traders got back into the market is the bottom very, very soon formed, meaning retail or rather institutional investors, they were very confident that entering back at this market when the bottom was in you can see as bitcoin was pulling back uh having that pandemic scare in march of 2020 well it's pulling back and then we had the pandemic scare but what you will notice is institutions doubled down on pretty much all of these dips as these scares happened as the price started to capitulate institutions jumped back into the market when bitcoin was round about 11,380 
And it shows uh, in other times as well, you know, during Bitcoin's bear market in 2018, the ratio of retail to institutions dropped, meaning once again, there's more institutions in the market and institution institutional FOMO reached its peak as the BTC USD price was at 3,500. So institutions were jumping back in the market. So the opportunities over here, you can see a massive uh, a massive jump in institutions down here at 4,000. Once again, remembering that this blue line, when it moves to the downside, it means there are a higher ratio of institutions in comparison to retail in previous data. Now, what is happening at this very moment in time? Since BTC was approaching it its first top, what you can see is retail or institutional investors were jumping back into this market. And we can see the exact same thing with the BTC wallets that held less than 1000 Bitcoin, that held more than 100 Bitcoin. You can see this went on a massive parabola as the uh, retail wallets were decreasing, meaning that this this base this basically this last bull run has been predominantly all caused by institutional investors smart money investors whales uh basically once again you know institutional investors are just considered bitcoin investors with more than 1000 btc so this could have been some guy that won the lottery this could be your favorite crypto youtuber who sells you courses and therefore has enough money to buy 1000 btc uh this can be celebrities institutions michael saylor anything of the sort as long as you've got 1000 btc or more you're considered an institutional investor and what are you noticing at this moment in time when the price of btc is moving to the downside are institutions doubling down thinking that the bottom is in no you've got this blue line going on a massive parabola showing us that the retail to institutional ratio is once again increasing Meaning that, you know, hey, there may be more institutions coming into the market if we were just looking at this chart alone. But looking at this chart alone, this tells us there are more retail than institutions. And then if we look at our individual charts to know what these subgroups of Bitcoin investors are doing, you can see institutional money is leaving the market. Whales are leaving the market. You know, people that have a decent amount of Bitcoin, less than 10 BTC, they're coming back into the markets. And then this is where you jump into your retail traders. Uh, if you want, you can go over and go over to places like Glassnode over on Twitter. And you can see, you know, everything from addresses with 0.001 BTC up to addresses with one BTC or less, they're all heavily accumulating. So looking at everything, wrapping it up in a neat bow, the Bitcoin price is going down, the active addresses are going up. So we know that something's happening Happening. People are either sending or receiving in the network. And by looking at the value of uh, or the ratio of retail to institutions, we know there's more retail in this market. Retail is heavily stepping in and accumulating. And the smart money, the institutional investors, they're currently leaving the market. Why do we talk about this? Because like I said at the start of the video, my friends, you can do what you want. You can formulate your own trading plan. But my trading plan is to at least incorporate not to wholeheartedly follow but to incorporate what smart money is doing what whales are doing and what institutional investors are doing i'd much rather take their input in what they think is going on with the btc price and i'd much rather take their input on when they think is a good time to buy rather than taking the input of something like a very retail driven metric kind of like the coinbase buy and sell signals you know where you go on coinbase and you uh, people post like a screenshot of shiba inu saying oh my god 80 percent of retail traders are buying on coinbase they're putting ten dollars into shiba so there's more buyers than sellers i mean that is not a good way to trade these markets you're looking at what the average retail trader is doing on coinbase whereas in my opinion we should be trying to do the opposite of retail traders and we should be doing what the smart money is doing and what the whales are doing. Once again, this is my trading plan. This is how I incorporate. This is one of the things I incorporate into my trading plan. Uh, but nonetheless, formulate your own TA, formulate your own opinions. Uh, that's all I've got for you today, my friends. And I hope you did enjoy today's content. As always, cowboy out. Peace.